I keep saying the word typically. Typically, typically, typically. <laughs> Hey guys, I am the mom from Mousecatubers and while the kids are out shooting some fun videos for you guys to watch, I'm here to answer some of the most frequently answered questions for your Disney vacation. So here we go. So how much is our Disney vacation budget? So this year for our Disney vacation, we have budgeted about $5,300. I'm hoping that I've over budgeted. I would rather budget high and then save some money and bring some extra money back with us. But that $5,300 includes um, our tickets and our hotel stay. We have about $2,900 budgeted for our hotel room for seven nights. That's at a value resort and six day park hopper tickets. The majority of the balance will probably actually go to food. Um, if you've never been to Disney before, eating within the parks can get relatively expensive even at the quick service restaurant so i would encourage you when you're working on your budget to take a look you can see all the restaurants see their menus and get an idea of how much it's going to cost you and your family to eat while you're in the parks so what are the benefits to staying on disney property our family has both stayed off property as well as on property on our trips to disney the majority of the time we have stayed on property. Um, we find it just to be more convenient and just as big of a value for our family to stay at Disney. Most of the time you can find um, a rate for the value resorts just as cheap, possibly cheaper as some of the, the hotels or resorts that are off property. When you are staying on property, you also have the advantage of booking your Fast Pass Pluses up to 60 days in advance. So you have kind of first choice on fast passes that may or may not run out depending on how busy the season is. One of the other benefits for guests staying on property at Disney is extra magic hours. The extra magic hours allow you to either visit a certain park earlier in the day or stay later in the day. So you may be able to get to the park an hour or two hours earlier than the general public is allowed and be able to ride, you know, three or four rides before anyone else actually comes in. Another advantage of staying at a Disney resort is the ease of transportation. For value resort guests, you're typically limited to the buses to and from your specific hotel, but if you're staying at moderate or even deluxe hotels, there are other options such as the monorail or boat services to and from some of the different parks. Some of the hotels and resorts that are off-site may offer shuttles to the park, but a lot of times those shuttles, there may be one or two in the morning and then one or two at night. So if you have small children and you wanna go back during the middle of the day to take a nap or relax or cool off in the pool or something, you may be limited to when you can and can't go back and forth if you use the shuttle service. You always have the option of driving, but it gets kind of pricey paying to park at each of the parks each day. I think cars now are maybe like 15 or $20 a day. So if you stay for five days, you're looking at an extra $100 just to park each day if you drive onto Disney property. Why should I consider a value resort? The past several years um, that we've traveled to Disney as a family, we have stayed at the value resorts. Um, we personally found the value resorts to be the best option, the best fit for our family. A lot of days when we go to the parks, we do rope drop and stay until pretty much closing time. Every now and then we might come back to the rooms if it's just super hot or we're exhausted. We might come back and hang out for an hour or something, but for the most part, we are only in our rooms just to sleep, maybe take a nap during the day and just to get ready for the next day. So it doesn't really make sense for us to pay an extra hundred or five hundred dollars at some of the locations just for a place to stay. Our kids have always enjoyed going to the value resorts. There are different Disney characters. Um, if you're staying at the All-Star Movie Resort, there's huge 
dogs from 101 Dalmatians. Um, you're gonna see big characters from Toy Story. The Value Resorts also offer activities for families and kids. Um, there's pool games going on all throughout the day, things that the kids can get involved in. And in the evening, um, many nights they play a movie on the big screen at the pool. So for the, the difference in the amount of money between the value or even just to the moderate, for us it just makes more sense to stay at a value resort and use the extra money elsewhere during our vacation. What is the park hopper option and is it worth the extra cost? Since our kids have been older and our Disney trips are longer, we have always added the park hopper option to our stays. The park hopper option allows you to visit multiple parks on one day. So rather than being limited to one Disney park, if you want to go to one in the morning, you can leave and go to a different park in the afternoon. It's been a huge advantage for us. Um, there's days that we have checked crowd calendars, um, looked online, done research to see which park is supposed to be the busiest this day, which park is supposed to be the least busiest, only to get there and find the park that we thought was going to have less of a crowd be pretty much wall to wall. So we, after just an hour, might leave and go to a park and it be less crowded and we're able to enjoy more things and do more things, see more things. Um, also with the park hopper, Last year our kids were more into riding rides. They wanted to ride every possible ride that they could ride. So we had five day park hoppers last year and every day regardless of where we were after dinner we would head back to Magic Kingdom. So while everyone else was saving their spots for the fireworks in the evening, we would be riding rides. We rode through the week, we rode every single ride at Magic Kingdom, which is something we had never been able to do before. There was one night that we stayed on Dumbo three times. We rode it three times in a row without even having to get off, and we actually watched the fireworks, or part of the fireworks, while we were on Dumbo. We rode Barnstormer a couple of times without having to get off. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't believe I did this once and now I'm having to do it. The park hopper option can also be good to give you more options on where you can eat on a daily basis. Um, if you're at Magic Kingdom and you decide that you really want to go to France to have a pastry, then you have the option of jumping on the monorail, heading from Magic Kingdom over to the Transportation Center and then getting on the second monorail to take you to Epcot. Just keep in mind that if you are doing this with a reservation, if you have a specific time that you need to be there, you probably need to allow yourself about an hour or hour and a half just to get between each park and of course get through the gates and get your bags checked and get to where you need to be going. Should I choose the dining plan? Is it worth the extra cost? If you're visiting Disney and they are not offering the free dining promotion, it's really something that you're going to have to look in to really kind of dig into a little bit more and get more information just based on how your family likes to eat or what your family is wanting to do while you're at Disney. Um, personally, I would love to take a trip and get the and purchase the dining plan and just have a trip that I'm really enjoying all the different foods and everything that there is to offer but right now with two younger kids it doesn't really make sense for us to pay for the dining plan the kids don't really want to stop and eat they're ready to go they're ready to ride rides they're ready to meet characters so for us it's we're gonna eat more on the go we typically eat breakfast in the hotel we have cereal or protein shakes something that's just quick so we can hurry up and get out the door and head to the parks. This trip we actually decided for three or four days we're gonna pack our lunch just to save a little bit of money. But you can actually go online when you're booking your vacation. You can see how much extra the dining plan is gonna cost you and then you can take a look at the menus, get an idea of where you want to eat and look at the cost for the meal. For quick service meals for our family, for two adults and two kids, Quick service meals are going to be about $40, $50, $60, um, just depending on what we eat. 
that day. Um, most of the adult meals are about $10 or $15 at a quick service restaurant, and then the kids' meals are usually like six or 10. The kids' meals do include drinks, but the adults do not. Um, we always drink water, and just one quick tip, you don't have to worry about bringing your water bottles into Disney if you don't want to. All of the, or most of the quick service meals actually will provide cups of ice water and we just take water packs or the little bottles of Mio to flavor our water and we save tons of money um, getting the free cups of water rather than paying $4 a bottle. Help, I can't seem to book an advanced dining reservation for a character meal. What should I do? The biggest tip that I can give is just to be persistent and keep trying. Last year we decided very last minute um, to take a Disney vacation and actually booked our vacation two weeks before we were going to leave. Um, if ideally, you're booking your vacation way in advance, um, regardless of if you're staying on Disney property or off property, you can make a reservation up to 180 days in advance. So as soon as you have your reservations made, for your hotel, go ahead and start looking at dining. Um, we try to always go to Chef Mickey's every year that we're there. We try to do Chef Mickey's for breakfast. Last year, when we first booked our vacation two weeks out, I could not find a breakfast. I could not find a reservation open for breakfast at Chef Mickey's, but I just kept trying. Honestly, like five or six times a day, I was on my Disney Experience app and just kept searching and kept searching until finally I did find one. People cancel them all the time. It, there's all the time reservations that will come open. So the biggest thing, if you cannot plan way in advance, just keep trying. Just keep checking and keep trying and more than likely, unless it's one of the really in demand reservations, you're gonna be able to find one. I checked the forecast and rain is showing the entire week of our vacation. Should I be concerned? Unless there is a hurricane coming, there is absolutely no reason to be concerned. We go to Disney almost every single summer and almost every single trip that we go, it rains every single day that we're there. So we have learned to just get our ponchos and power through it. Um, I do recommend that if you're going in the summer months, you definitely pack your ponchos, buy your ponchos in advance. You can buy them in any of the parks, but they are going to be very expensive. So we, this time we actually ordered ours on Amazon, but you can also, if you are driving or if you'll have access to a car, once you get to the Orlando area, there are several Walmarts that are nearby, you can run over to Walmart and grab ponchos for your family. If you're gonna be staying for an extended period of time, I would suggest either buying a few extras or just making sure that you buy a more quality poncho. Not necessarily a rain jacket because it's gonna be hard to stuff it down in your backpack or underneath your stroller when you're not using it, but just one that's not gonna rip while you're actually putting it on. And we, a lot of times you'll see people that they don't want to deal with the rain so it actually helps with the crowd control so if you have your poncho and you're willing to walk through the downpour you are going to get to see more things enjoy more things and just try to have fun and enjoy it regardless of what's going on around you um, you can also use that time to find somewhere to sit down and eat most of the restaurants even the quick service restaurants are going to have covered areas for you to eat or they're going to be indoors or try to find a show that's going on during that time and you can hop over to the show and enjoy it. And usually by the time the show's over with, the rain cloud that passed over is gonna be gone. I know what I'm trying to say, it's just not okay. flowing. 